Hey guys, welcome to this episode. Now this video is about the new launch Amplify Data Store. Now Amplify Data Store was released during the last reinvent which was held like few weeks back and I found it really useful. Because now the developers can build offline supported applications with GraphQL APIs very easily. So in this video we are going to do an introduction to Amplify Data Store and we'll explore it with a quick demo. So what really is Amplify Data Store? So essentially, AWS Amplify Data Store allows you to read, write, and observe data to your local device. And it will make sure that data is synced with the cloud. So for example, if you're an Android iOS developer, now you can build application that writes to your local SQLite database. Or if you're a web developer, you can build application that write data into IndexedDB in Chrome. An Amplified Data Store will sync that data with AWS Cloud. So it's going to handle all the real-time updates, offline data synchronization, conflict resolution, and everything. Now, here's what happens under the hood. So you, as the developer, can use Data Store API to interact with your local database. So what is this local database? It could be SQLite, could be IndexedDB in Chrome. Now those two are available by default and they will add support to other local databases as well. So when you use the data store API, it calls the storage engine that will use the correct storage adapter to interact with the local database of your preference. Now the storage engine is also connect to a sync engine. The main responsibility of this sync engine is to synchronize your local data with the data in the cloud. Now, as the cloud backend, you have to use AWS AppSync. Now, AppSync use GraphQL, but you don't necessarily have to write GraphQL queries or mutations or subscription. At the Sync engine will handle that and it will make sure your local data is always synced with the data in the cloud. Now, however, you can choose not to use the cloud at all. You can build application that persists data only within your local device and essentially use AWS Amplify without AWS as well. Okay, now let's get to our demo and understand this better. Okay, so the demo application is available at this GitHub URL and you can do a clone here. Copy this URL and then you can do git clone and you will find these folders. Now this is a to-do application that is built with React. Let's see how application looks like. I will type yarn to install all the dependencies so you can use npm. Now I will execute the command npm run start. That will start up the application. So a simple to do application. You can type any to do here. You can add to do's like so and you can edit these to do's as well. and you can delete them as well. But at this moment, these to-dos are not persisting. See, if I refresh this, it is removed. So in this demo, we'll add Amplify Data Store first to create a locally persistent application and then let us sync with the cloud. Now I've added all the steps in the GitHub repository. So if you scroll it a little bit down, you should see steps to followed in the demo. Now as the very first step, we need to install the latest Amplify CLI, which you can do it very easily with NPM. Now I already installed it, so let's proceed to the second step. Now since you are planning not to sync with the cloud in the first step, the easiest way to add Amplify Data Store is to use an NPM script. So we'll run this NPM script and see what are the files that get added. We'll paste it in and hit enter. So as you can see, several folders and files are created. You see, this Amplify folder has been created and it has added an API as a backend. And under that API folder, you have Amplify data source. And inside that, you will find a file called schema.graphql. Now, there's a sample GraphQL schema given for you as well. Now, this is because Amplify Data Store uses GraphQL API to do all the syncing part. 
Now, when I enable cloud synchronization, it's going to create an AWS App Sync API and sync the local data. So it's always advised to start modeling your application with a GraphQL schema. And that is one of the good practice. Now let's do exactly that and model our to do application using a GraphQL type. So I will go to the third step, which is to create a GraphQL type of to do that models our to do application. So let me copy this out and I will select it and replace with that. Because my application is a to do application, I have this to do type and each to do will have its own ID and the task. So this could be string. So whatever the things that we type as a to do and I'm decorating it with at model directive, which will create a dynamo DB table when we sync with cloud and app sync API will be used to interact with that dynamo DB table. Now, before syncing it with the cloud, I want to run everything locally. So first I have to call amplify data store APIs. And for that, I need to generate some code. So in order to generate some code, that is needed to call your local databases, I can use amplify code gen. Clear the screen and paste this in and hit enter. So this will generate code for our GraphQL type that will allow us to interact with the data store API. Now you can see in the source folder, it has created a new folder called models. So inside this model, I find this schema.js. Now this schema file is corresponding to our schema of GraphQL. You can see as for the fields, you have ID and task, and this is used to interact with my local data store as well as for synchronization. Okay. Now that we have generated the models, it's time to interact with the data store within our react application. So for that, I need to install some dependencies. Let me copy this NPM command, clear the screen, paste it in. So it's going to install Amplify Core Library and then Amplify Data Store Dependencies. Hit Enter. Okay, now those dependencies are installed. You can verify it if you go to package.json file. Now we can import Data Store into our to-do component and use it. So as the sixth step, I will copy these import statements, open source folder, under components, I will go to to-do component and paste them here. By the way, you wouldn't need this amplifier import, I will take it out. But we need to import this data store from at AWS Amplify Data Store and all the models that is generated earlier in the model generation. So if I go to models, it will reference the type file here. Now in the application, when I type something and hit add item, it's going to create a new to do. The function that get called is create to do. So right now what's doing is it'll push that to do that is passed from the front end to an array called to do's and then it will update the application state thereby show that to do in the UI. But now we are going to store that new to do's in the data store. So let me uncomment this code. So what I'm going to create is a create a constant called new to do and I'm going to use the data store dependence that we imported up there. So the API of data store is very simple. You see, in order to create an item in the data store, it's simply a matter of calling data store dot save and then pass the new item here. I'm importing the to do model right here. That is already available in our models folder that is automatic generated for us and do a new to do instantiation. And here I'm not assigning an ID, but only the task or the to do that is passed from the front end. So it is task dot tasks. So you can have these attributes any way you like. And this will pass the value of the to do into the property called task, which we have declared in our to do model. So that's it. This should be now stored in our data store. So let's check that out. Run the application again. I will open up an inspect element. Go to this application tab. On the left side bar, you should find index DB. Now this is our browser database. So let me add a new to do. Add item. Now you can see it has created a new database in index DB. So let's explore this database. There's a table called user underscore to do. 
and in this user underscore to do it is a key value store the task is registered task and the id and data store added some additional attributes like version last changed and deleted attributes i will add a new to do if i refresh the database again now we have two items however if i refresh it till it's not showing anything this is because we haven't loaded the information from the data store at loading i will uncomment this dot load task in component did mount and i will load the to do's from the data store when the component is mounting so here i'm still again using the data store api dot query method and i'm just passing the to do type or the to do model that we imported up there now this will load all the to do's that is available in your local store but you can also pass a predicate to filter out some data based on attributes then i'll get those to do's and i will only map the id and the task and then i'll set the state and let's see how this works now if i refresh it you can see it's already picking up all those to do's perfect now let's connect amplify data store for edit and delete as well so the edit button will call this update to do function so here before updating a to do i need to find that to do in the data store so i will do a data store dot query to do model is passed then i will identify the original data item in the data store but we cannot directly update this item in the data store because data store is an immutable store for that you need to create a copy of this original item here and then only update let's say in this case i'm updating the to do text so similarly in the delete functionality first i'll get that to do from the data store and then i'll do data store dot delete passing that to do reference so let's see if that all works fine we do a refresh so currently our store has two let me update one of these items like up at 6am and save it data store may be stale that's true and i will refresh it you can see now it's updated to 6am i will delete one of these to do's again refresh it now you can see there's only one to do left in our data store you can refresh it still only showing one perfect now this is how you build application locally without having the connection to the cloud now in the next video i will show you how we can connect this application to cloud with the minimum changes i will upload both the videos in the same go i will upload both the videos in the same time thanks guys i'll see you soon